Have you ever been out for a shoot? You nailed it, got it in the can, bring it home, put it on your computer and realize, oh no, the sound's got some serious problems. I don't even know if it's usable. That could be noise, that could be all sorts of funny stuff. The levels are way too low, whatever it might be. Well, in this particular case, we're gonna run through an example of where that happened and some of the things that we did to try and make that sound usable, rescue the sound, if you will. Now, this isn't gonna go really in depth in any of the particular steps, but sort of an overview, and then in future episodes, based on your requests, we'll deep dive a little bit on each of the individual topics. So, check this out. One of our YouTube friends over here, TPTV, sent me an audio file of a groom reading a letter and uh, kind of an intimate moment. And he said, hey, this uh, audio is not as clean as I'd like it to be. What can you do to fix these types of situations? So let's just do a quick run through. Now, the purpose of this is not to give you a comprehensive understanding of how to fix these, but to kind of give you some ideas now. And I want you guys to kind of lead me in the direction of, you know, of, of the things we talk about here today, what do you want to dive into more depth on? And uh, so I'm not gonna dive in too deep, but just kind of give you a quick overview of how we could sweeten this sound up a little bit. And uh, you tell me where you wanna go next. Here's a quick preview of what the sound sounds like directly out of the audio recorder. Now, in this case, I know some of you will ask, uh, I believe we were recording with a Rode VideoMic Pro and uh, in, there was also a Tascam DR07 recorder, I believe it was involved in this. So. That's not terribly important. Some of you may be curious about that, but this is what it sounds like. You introduced me to a life that I've never known. When I'm by your side, that's when I'm feeling at home. And my only attempt is to make you smile. Okay, there's a few problems here. Obviously, the first one is that the signal just isn't that loud. So we need to bring up those levels some. Secondly, there is a persistent, annoying whining sound, which is really probably noise from the preamp in whatever device was doing this recording. Again, I believe it was a Tascam recorder, or it may have been into the camera. I'm not sure on which one, but um, in any case, there is definitely a noise there that we need to clean up. So uh, let me run through how I would fix this. First of all, you'll notice this is a stereo signal. We have a left and right channel. And honestly, if it's um, dialogue, I will typically just drop this down to mono. It's not gonna make a difference. If, if you're doing some super production where you're doing surround sound, great. Um, but that's pretty advanced and I think most of us are not doing stuff like that. So I'm going to extract channels to mono files and I'm just gonna work on the left channel or the right channel, excuse me. Go ahead and select all, go up to favorites and choose normalize to minus 0.1 dB. Now, when I do this, watch the waveform over here in the main window and you'll see what happens there. So it's maximized the levels pretty much and taken the highest peaks up to as close to zero dB, or actually to minus 0.1 dB. So it stops them just before they clips and just sort of gives us the maximum we can get out of our signal. Now you'll notice here in between phrases, that's where we're hearing that, that's where we're seeing that noise. So the thing that I do is um, typically after that, I there are two actually noise reducers or noise effects here in Adobe Audition. And uh, and again, oh yeah, so forgot to mention earlier, we are working in Adobe Audition. Obviously there are other audio processing applications that can do similar things. This one works well if you're do doing a lot with dialogue. So I like to use this for dialogue. Um, there are two noise reduction uh, effects and a couple of ways you can do it. If you come in here into the effects rack and you choose noise reduction, there's this adaptive noise reduction. That one works okay, but I don't find that quite as effective for situations like this as if you come up to the effects menu, choose noise reduction, and here's, first here we wanna capture our noise print. So I've selected a section here in between phrases where there's nothing but noise. And that feeds Audition the information it needs to determine, okay, what if this is the actual signal you need to keep and which is noise that we can get rid of? So we've done that. So once we've done that, we deselect and then we go back and select all. Okay, then what I do is I come back up to the effects, again, go into noise reduction, and this time choose a noise reduction process. Now, I will typically select this output noise only first, because what that'll help me to do is I can scrub through my audio, go ahead and start playing it, and tweak these settings to make sure that I'm getting as much of the noise as possible without affecting uh, or affecting as little of the actual signal that I wanna keep as possible. So really what it's gonna play for you is just the parts that it's going to remove. And so you wanna kind of fine tune that until you get to the part where again, you're not affecting the signal you wanna keep, but you are getting as much of the noise as possible. So I've already done that. I'm gonna go ahead and choose 90 in this particular case. We can come back in a future episode and go into more detail on that. But those are the two main settings I tweak and mainly actually just the noise reduction 
uh, slider is the main one I do. So once I'm ready to apply it, I uncheck output noise only and choose apply. And watch what happens to our signal. Now in between the dialogue, when we have these pauses, you can see there's almost nothing there. So we really got rid of a lot of that noise. And it also took care of some of the noise in the dialogue itself. So again, I find that the best way to do it. If you use the adaptive noise filter, um, this one tends to get the stuff in between phrases really nicely, but doesn't do as well um, at getting the stuff in the actual phrasing. So, uh, or maybe it does and I just don't know how to use it very well yet, but I find it's a lot easier to do it the way I just showed you. So that's the first thing. Next thing I'm going to do is just to apply um, some EQ. So we're gonna choose a parametric equalizer. And in this case, again, I've already uh, selected a couple of things, but just let me explain what I've done here. Over here on the left-hand side, we have our high pass filter and all that's doing is rolling off the lowest frequencies. In those lowest sub 100 Hertz frequencies, really all we're talking about getting rid of here is noise. And there's no reason to keep any of that. So we go ahead and, and chop that off. And in this case, I've gone to 40 Hertz. We could actually bump that up if we wanted to closer to 100, because there's not a lot going on below 100. So I'm gonna bump that up to 72 and we're, gain, we're gonna do minus 30 dB per octave. So that's just a good setting to roll that off pretty quickly. Now there are two other issues I'm trying to fix. Number one, when you don't have the mic right up on your talent, and, and typically that's gonna be the case in, a, in something like a wedding, what happens is that it seems like you don't get as much of the low end pickup from your talent. And so what I've found is cutting a little tiny bit at 1K can help to bring that out a little bit. It just kind of mellows out some of those uh, low medium frequencies and brings the low end out pretty nicely. So that's the first thing I did. And again, we can go into this more detail in future. Second thing I did is the room sounded a little honky or hollow. And uh, you know what that sound is like. You've heard it before a thousand times. And what this cut right here at uh, 200 Hertz I did, I kind of, I just put a cut of six decibels and I kind of moved it around just kind of grab this and move it around to see what it, the effect was while I was playing the audio. And I found that at about 200 Hertz, that actually helped to reduce some of that honkiness or that hollowness in the room a little bit. So that was uh, another effect that I applied. All right, and then after that, I typically will come over here into the special menu, choose mastering. And while I'm playing my audio and watching this level here, what I'm gonna do is watch the peaks and you'll notice that we're peaking somewhere in the minus nine to sometimes a little higher maybe to minus four but we really want to kind of maximize that level so that when our when our listeners watch the video the final video they're not having to crank their their sound up to hear everything and so what we're going to do here is bring this loudness maximizer up until most of our peaks are coming into the minus three, maybe up to, to you know closer to zero, but not getting pegged there. If you push it too hard, all the dialogue, once we hit those signals, is just sort of pegged there, and that's not gonna sound good. But I found in this case about 30% is, is doing nicely for us. The other thing I, I like to do a lot for dialogue is once I've got the bass or the lower frequencies sounding good, is to add a little bit of exciter, and what that does is it kind of adds a little bit of a sheen to the higher frequencies. So it still sounds very much like a real person, but you get the nice rich low end, plus you get some emphasis up there in the, in the higher frequencies as well, and gives it a nice sound. So once I've done that, Come, ahead, come over here and, and take a look at these. And you can see before any of these process, this processing that we've done, that's what the output levels look like. And then after the processing, this is what the output levels look like right here. So you'll notice a couple of things. Um, number one, well, the main thing you'll notice is that it's just a hotter signal. Um, in both of these, we already have applied the noise reduction, so it's really helped our noise floor. When before, when we played this, before we had done the noise reduction, in when it when you were in the silent parts, or and I say that in quotes, we were probably still in the minus 33 range, but now you can see it's dropping a lot lower at the silent points, which means we've cleaned up a lot of that noise. So that's just a quick example. What I would do at this point is go ahead and apply those settings. You can see it affects our waveform here and we've got a nice strong signal and then I could go ahead and file and export that to a file. So let me just give you a quick sample of what that sounds like once we've applied this processing relative to the original file. So first we'll play the original file, then the process file, and we'll come back from there. You introduced me to a life that I've never known. When I'm by your side, that's when I'm feeling at home. And my only attempt is to make you smile. I promise. So believe what I say when I say I'm real. Cause there ain't nothing, no mistake in the way I feel. You introduced me to a life 
that I've never known. When I'm by your side, that's when I'm feeling at home. And my only attempt is to make you smile. I promise. So believe what I say when I say I'm real. Cause there ain't nothing, no mistake in the way I feel. All right. Again, I hope you found that helpful. This, again, was not meant to go super in-depth, but go ahead and give you some ideas of the kinds of things we could cover in future episodes. Go ahead and leave some comments below on which things you'd like to dive into in a little bit more detail. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you did, go ahead and subscribe and tell your friends about us, and you'll get some more videos on how to improve your sound and your lighting for video. Talk to you soon.